Hi, welcome to my channel again. And today we're going to be talking something a little bit different. Now, the last uh, couple of uh, videos were on vintage cameras from Mr. Wu, but today uh, is, some, is a day I want to address something very, very close to my heart. Now, lately, the internet has been talking about an unindated with a new Hasselblad 907X 100C 100 megapixel 907. Today, I want to explain to you some of the caveats and kind of a warning of when you're going to purchase this camera, how it's going to be enlightened to your life and to your hobby. Okay, so first of all, let's go over the camera. Now, this is a 907-50C, as you can see. And I get it. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful camera, and the reason why I got it is because it's based on the old 503 Hasselblad, which I love. So I went and got one. Now, as you can see, we have three of them here and an X2D. So today I want to explain to you some of the pitfalls regarding this camera. And maybe it might not be the right camera for you. Okay, so let's have a little tour of the 907. Number one. You can see it's a huge medium format sensor, 4x3, and this is a 50 megapixel sensor. This is the heart of the camera. This is the body of the camera. As you can see, it's very thin, a couple centimeters, and this is called the 907X. This is a CFV250C. In order to use this, you must take the two pieces and put them together. So you get these two hooks at the bottom, as you can see here, and hook them up to the, to the bottom of the, the sensor body and click it together as such. So now you have the complete modular system. This is the unit when the 100 megapixel comes out, will cost you 8,200 US dollars. This is all you get, okay? Now, in order to work this camera ergonomically, it's a bit complicated. Number one, the shutter, dial, the shutter and the aperture dial is located here. Your shutter release is located there. And this button here, you have to press and turn the bottom button to change the shutter speed. And it can be extremely difficult to do at times. Now, the economics of it is beautiful. It's just a box. And if you want to use a viewfinder, you use this LCD screen. And you look top down just like the old 503. And by the way, there is no EVF. So, you look at it like this and you hand hold it and you use this shutter button to take your picture. And by the way, there is no IBIS in this. Without in-body in stabilization, it is extremely difficult to get good, sharp images handheld, especially at low speeds. Now, when you have a 100 megapixel, it's going to be even more difficult because you can't move at all. So just to let you know that you're going to be missing that part. And it's going to have to be used on a tripod most of the time. Now, if you want to use this as a street photography, it's going to be very, very difficult. And yes, you can get this handheld grip. Now, this grip is very interesting. It's very odd shape. And as you can see, it's kind of like upside down, although it looks cool. And then you attach it to the bottom, like so. And it's not exactly secure. It's not easy to, to attach. Now I'll just leave it off. Because it just doesn't make any sense. And it goes like this. Now as you can see, the grip is thick side up and thin side down. Actually, it should be opposite. Because the grip 
in handling this is a bit awkward and it feels like it's going to slip. You're, it was it should have been designed to be upside down in which you have the bot, the bigger part in the palm of your hand and it'll give you a lot more stability. Okay. Now, let's go to the battery life. The battery life on this is, I hate to say, is not very good. The battery is located in here and it's not very big. And it, take, it consumes a lot of, the camera consumes a, a lot of power and comes with two, two card slots. All right. Now with a 100 megapixel version, it's going to consume even more battery life. So please be forewarned on that. All right. Now, we have here a special edition 80th anniversary Hasselblad, which is absolutely gorgeous. And I don't really use this. It belongs to my wife, and she loves it. And there's only a few pieces made. I think there's only 80 pieces made. And it's more of a, a dull brushed aluminum uh, body. Okay, now we get into the lenses. We have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lenses, Hasselblad lenses. What do I think about their lenses? Their lenses are absolutely amazing. Fantastic. Best lenses I've ever seen. The downside is they're very heavy. And with a new model, such as this new 28, which is extremely difficult to get. And that's the problem with Hasselblad. They come out with this stuff, these lenses, and then you can't get them. And you gotta wait months and months then they'll introduce another one, which you can't get for months anyway. So here's what I suggest. I suggest with the money you're going to spend on a 907, as beautiful as a 907X100C is, 8,200. And that's just this unit here. By the time you put a 65 and a wide angle and a 135 and a faster... 80, 1.8, and then you want to zoom, you're looking at close to 55,000 US dollars. Now, if you have that kind of dough, hey, knock yourself out. It's great. But I'm, I'm just saying that it's a very subjective, so please be careful when you make this major purchases because the internet has been not been nothing but praises and the beauty of this camera saying it's the most beautiful camera in 2023 or 2024 which i agree but it comes at a cost at a very heavy cost if you have the buying power of 55 to 60 thousand dollars and that's just you're just a middleweight there i strongly suggest the X2D. Why? Because the X2D is going to cost a little bit less, if not the same, and it comes with image stabilization, which is a must, and with an electronic viewfinder. And it handles like a normal uh, mirrorless camera, which everyone's used to, and has a great LCD back. So I strongly suggest this. This is in my opinion. So if you're in for it, if you like the beauty and the aesthetics, then get the 907 models. But if you're a serious uh, photographer and want to take uh, and being versatile, then I strongly suggest X2D. And I think other guys on the internet, even Bobby Tonelli, my friend, even suggested that. So with that in mind, I hope you guys make the right decisions.